guys, how's it going? Shinami Sam here to do review Boku no Hero Academia 115. Now guys, let's actually get straight into this chapter because what I really did like about it was it was a nice breath of fresh air and this is like one of the only chapters that what Deku hasn't been in. So um, yeah, I just really wanted to introduce that to you guys at first because it was quite significant and I really do like the spin that Horikoshi took on it. So let's dive straight in. So the chapter starts off with twice. And as you guys, you know who Twice is. Twice is AKO, the Deadpool of the Boku no Hero for, um, universe. So, um, everybody loves Twice. Everyone loves Twice. Um, yeah, and I really am intrigued in this character. I really am loving his character because at face value, like, me included, when I was reading this chapter, I, when I was reading this chapter, I was like, hang on, who is this guy? Like, are we getting introduced into a, are we getting introduced to a new villain? Like, I really did like how Horikoshi started off this chapter, especially if twice. And if you look back at the previous chapters where, as well, it's it's extremely different to um the uh, license exam arcs. Now I'm not saying obviously with the different people, but more of like just the structure and Horikoshi's style of writing. It's a little bit it has a little bit more depth to it. It's a little bit more it's a little bit more what's the word? Gritty. If you kind of get my, if, if you can kind of understand what I'm trying to say, especially with Twice, because we're kind of like, Horikoshi is delving into like split pers personalities and especially the struggles that Twice is Twice is actually experiencing. So I really did enjoy this chapter. It was definitely, actually, one of my favorite chapters because um, I do have a lot of favorite chapters. But when I do think of Boku no Hero, and I do love the villains, I really do. I just because I find it so real and so dark, that's why I love it. Because when I think back on some of the, my favorite Boku no Hero chapters, it always goes back to 69, and that's obviously when Shigaraki's talking to Deku. Like, I love those chapters. And this kind of gave me the same vibes from Twice's character. But what really does, what is really significant to take away from this chapter is. Horikoshi is telling us that Twice's character is not comedy. It's not comedy. He's not a comical character just to fill in for a barrel of laughs. Because with us knowing about the struggles which he experienced with his, you know, personalities, the fact that he died, or we don't know if he's the real one, like, it gives a lot more depth to his character. Because before, I just loved him because he was kind of funny and he was just a little bit out there. But now, I think a lot of people can now emphasise with Twice. And Horikoshi is really doing this with the villains because the villains in this series, they're not evil because I'm evil. They're not evil because of that. Like they have true, like they have true reasons why. And they're not, and it's not, and it, and it's not like they're just labelled evil. They're just villains because that's how society labels them. So I really do like that. I really do like the kind of, the struggles that is present in these characters. So it really does give me a fresh of breath of air, fresh a breath of fresh air. And um, what I really do, what I really do actually love about Boku no Hero, and it does highlight it in this chapter, Boku no Hero's got like two sides to it series. It's got like, you know, the hype action, the field of, you know, Deku, Todoroki, Todoroki, like Bakugo, all of those stuff. And then it gets deep with like the villains. And that's what it is. It is, it is um, a hero school manga, but it's of, it's of course heroes and villains. So there's always two sides to the story, there's always two sides of the scale. And that's what I love about it, because with the heroes, and it gives different sides of what you're experiencing. From, from For example, when I'm reading a chapter and it's all about villains, I probably get I, I get different feelings from reading the villains. If it's about, you know, the heroes and that, you get a little bit more hyped, it's a little bit more light-hearted, if you see what I mean. And that's what I really, that's what I noticed from this chapter, and from some of, a lot of the other chapters that have the villains in it, it's a lot less light-hearted. Obviously, Horikoshi does that just to show how much of a terrifying presence they are, but also gives a bit more depth to those characters, because with the whole thing about the heroes, the superhero genre... It can fall a little bit flat because it's not just in comic, not in manga, in comic books in general. Because a lot of people may not be able to relate to the superheroes because they're just so distant and so far off, attached from our world that we can't be like, yeah, I can see myself experiencing that struggle. If you get what I mean. But from Boku no Hero, twice his character specifically, the struggles that he's going through. When I was first reading it, I thought at first he had like a little bit. I thought he had depression or he had like um withdrawal symptoms from drugs or something like that. Not to say that he hasn't. Who knows? Maybe twice as. But he's going under psychological effects now. That does beg me to question. Was that due to his other doubles or was that part of the quirk itself? We do know that in Boku no Hero, quirks do have its limits. It does have its drawbacks. So imagine that 
the fact that twice he's experiencing this psychological psychological impacts, this terror that that he feels like he's gonna split apart in these doubles that like he can't control it. Is that because of his excessive use of his quirk or what he did in the past when like his doubles killed himself because he's probably not the real one. So yeah, this chapter was deep and I did love Twice's character. But let's get aside from that guys, because we gotta talk about that end widespread page, man. We we're seeing all might and all for one. This is hype. When anyone saw that page, guys, please tell me, did you get X-Men vibes? You know when um it was a saviour when he went to come in to talk to Magneto, and Magneto was obviously in that plastic prison kind of thing. I, I, I got mad X-Men vibes when I saw that. I was just like, yo. Um, but anyway, let's not let's not digress. But yes, I love that widespread page of All Might and One For All. Now this is extremely unexpected because I necessarily didn't really see this coming soon. I thought the next time you'd probably see All For One um, would be like a, as a possible breakout or something like that. But no, that's far from it. Um, All Might has come to see All For One to ask for questions, to ask for more knowledge. Now, guys, what do you think he's gonna ask? Because obviously we don't know, so we'll have to find out next week. But I'm gonna think it's probably about Shigaraki. Bear in mind in this chapter, the guy, the guy with glasses, I can't remember his name. But he did tell us that Shigaraki wants the Villain Alliance to meet up again. And of course from what happened last chapter, maybe it's got something to do with Toga as well. So um, the Villain Alliance is coming back together because they've all been disbanded. Not disbanded, sorry, but they're all in like different locations. You know, trying to get more, they're trying to get more people into the Villain Alliance. They're trying to grab more people in. Um, just to like, what's the word? To get more members to largen out their organisation. Now... All Might's coming to All For One for questions. That can be about Shigaraki because obviously All Might does want to know more about it, the fact that Shigaraki is Shimura Nana's grandson. So All Might possibly, because I remember in straight after the fight between All Might and All For One, All Might kind of wanted to save Shigaraki. Like when he was on his, on his hospital bed talking to Gran Torino, he was like, oh, I've got to go and I need to go and get Shigaraki. And obviously Gran Torino stopped him because he was like, listen, Shiraki is a villain and you're not going to treat him like one, you'll treat him like Shimura's grandson. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for that, but it does, if this is true, if All Might is coming for Shigaraki, now a lot of questions raised. One, is this right? Should All Might truly be doing this now that he is No Might? Um, because obviously he doesn't have his hero form anymore, so he practically is powerless. Should he be trying, should he be getting himself involved in this anymore? Because he has, he can't protect himself anymore, he can't defend himself anymore. Um... So yeah, guys, tell me your thoughts come below about that. And in this chapter, before we go, I'm going to talk about those villains that we saw. We saw, we know that people like Twice, Dabby, all of these guys, they're going out and recuperating people. Um, they're going out and, you know, uh, recruiting people. And we see these, we see these reservoir dogs or something like that. And they basically, these guys, they just come into a shop and just steal, like, the whole cash register. And then they get destroyed by other villains. It looks like they got burned alive. That's what it looked like, so obviously quite graphic, quite morbid, um, by these other villains called Overhaul. Now, I know that I was talking about X-Men in this chapter, but again, I got other vibes from uh, Penguin, from obviously DC, Batman, one of Batman's villains. Now, guys, bear in mind Horikoshi has said it plenty of times himself that he's a Marvel DC fan. He loves comic books, so it is not hard to see these um these similarities because obviously Horikoshi is inspired by these stuff. So first of all, Overhaul, the guy with the, the the beard mask kind of thing, the bird mask, sorry, he looks awesome. I really am loving it. I'm loving that character design. He's talking all about illness, about how it has to be purged. So I do like his, uh, I, I am liking his character. He seems pretty cool. Now, what I did like at the end was obviously what Twice said, because remember, Twice kind of I don't know if he's broken the fourth wall yet, but it seems like he's dancing on the line pretty much. Because at the end of it, he's just like, when he's looking at Overhaul and all those guys, he's like, now what shall I do? So obviously he's questioning us as well, knowing twice his character, and I'm wondering, what is he actually going to do? Is he going to recruit them? Because I'd love to see these more of these guys. One of the things which I love about Horikoshi is his character designs, and I always do fall in love with his character designs, even before we've met, like, even before we know anything about the character. 
So right now I'm already enticed. So um, guys, please tell me your thoughts comment below. What did you actually think of this chapter? It was different than the regular ones. Nice. I really did enjoy it. I had a lot to talk about. It was a meaty chapter. I did enjoy, especially twice his chaps, uh, twice his character. So I really do like Horikoshi putting some focus on the villains. So guys, what did you think about that? What did you like that little touch that twice had? How the pe his other doubles in his head was kind of talking. It's kind of like Deadpool as well. Um, with the black um text boxes. So that was pretty awesome to see. So shouldn't have any sound guys. If you liked anything that I'd say, please drop a like, that'd be greatly appreciated. And subscribe for weekly reviews of Boy on the Hero. Let's continue the discussion down below. Peace out guys and goodbye.